Most gracious God, our Father, we, we acknowledge your sovereignty, Lord God. We yield at the foot of the cross. Thank you and praising you, Lord God, for just a, being a giving God. Thank you for being a God of all comforts, that you comfort us, that we can comfort someone else in the time that they need comforting. Asking you, Lord God, to forgive us any sin that we committed by thought, words, and deed. Cleanse us now. Hide us behind the cross. We'll be so helpful grateful to give you the praise, glory, and the honor. We thank you, Lord God. We ask that you would cover our pastor, wherever he may be at this time. Those that are sick and shut in, Father, we ask that you would just keep your hands upon them so evil can't harm them, Lord God. Praying that you would enlarge our territory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. For where can we go? Thou hast the word to eternal life. We believe and are sure that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. In the book of Luke, amen, the 19th chapter, we're going to speak to you just for a few minutes. We certainly want to acknowledge our two graduates this morning from Chosen Generation, CG4L. Amen. Brother, Brother Darian, for some reason, his information didn't get in there. He got all those ribbons and ropes around him, too. I just asked Takara to borrow the orange one to go with my outfit, and she kicked me up to the curb. <laughs> Amen. We still love him, though. We thank God for them and trust and believe that God is going to send us even more. Isn't that right, Relidra? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In the book of Luke at the 19th chapter, we're going to begin our reading at the very first verse. And it reads, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. In other words, Luke is saying he was short. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. He was happy, y'all. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. We're going to lift up verse 5 this morning. 
be the will of God. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. I want to speak to you for a moment, and if you would tell your neighbor as you're taking your seat, Jesus saw me. Jesus saw me. Somebody ought to be happy about that this morning, that Jesus saw me. Amen? He saw me. I'm looking at the clock, y'all. If you give me 18, 17 minutes and 32 seconds, we'll be out your way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus saw me. My brothers and my sisters, whenever you make up in your mind that you're, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, that you're going to start living your life for Christ, you would be sadly mistaken to think if you thought that you could accomplish that task without any attacks from the enemy. Don't think for one minute that you can start living your life right, that you can get involved in a ministry, making an effort to do a godly thing without the devil attacking you. Can I suggest to you today that anything Anything that God is in, the devil wants to tear apart. Can I suggest to you today, just know that whoever God wants to bring out, the devil wants to take out. Anything, anything, anything that God, anything, any person that God wants to elevate, the devil wants to eliminate. But Luke tells us that here it is, Jesus had just entered into Jericho. And while he was passing through, there's a brother by the name of Zacchaeus who, after hearing so much about the man Jesus, he feels a need not only to get closer, but also to see Jesus. But as life sometimes has it, sometimes goes, he runs into some difficulties. The first difficulty I see here in the text, it, it, here it is, the difficulty in seeing Jesus. When Zacchaeus gets to where Jesus is, Luke says that he runs into a crowd no doubt others had heard also that Jesus was coming, passing that way, and they too wanted to see him. And now Luke sees things differently than the disciples, and throughout the book of Luke, he speaks more detail than the other disciples. And that just may be because Luke is a physician. So not only is there a crowd, but Luke says the physician, he tells us that Zacchaeus was vertically challenged. The man was short, and he couldn't see over the crowd. He couldn't see Jesus because of the people. In other words, Zacchaeus couldn't see him for them. Here it is, because they blocked his line of sight. And believe it or not, it's like that in our churches today. People come to church, but they can't see him for them. They get more gossip than they get gospel. People press their way to church, but they get torn down more than they get built up. Can't get into that ministry because they get counted out more than the people will count on them. Yeah. It's hard to see him for them. And just let me say, don't let yourself get too caught up with this. Here it is, on what someone is wearing, why they're not into praise and worship, why they're not up there dancing around like that back row on the praise team does, <laughs> that you can't see him for them. Don't let anything or anybody block you from seeing Jesus. And to our graduates this morning, keep your focus on your studies, on your God. Amen. L like the one with the issue of blood, you've got to have a made-up mind. Here it is. When folk talk about you, just press your way through. When your co-workers steal your ideas, just press your way through. When family and friends go through, just press your way through. So, 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 so what that people don't, don't like you? Press your way through. Come to think about it, I, I don't have a problem with the Savior. No problems at all. It's the so-called saints that make me sick. You hear me, Reverend Brown? It's the so-called saints. We're, we're keeping it real this morning. So you don't have a, to say it out loud, but have you ever felt like that? Ain't got no problem with the Savior. It's the so-called saints that make you want to go off. Yeah, yeah, you love the Savior, but it's the so-called saints that make you want to open up a can. Y'all understand what I'm saying. Hello, somebody. Here it is. Zacchaeus is trying. He's trying hard to see Jesus. But there's a difficulty with the crowd. And not only that, there's a difficulty with his condition. Zacchaeus is short. He can't put, put, put that on anybody else. 
like we attempt to do at times, y'all know how it is. He, he can say something like, they too tall. I can't see over them. No, some of the reasons must be placed on him. He's too short, and, and that's how it is with us. Sometimes we can't always put the blame on other people or, or the devil all the time with something we did. No, no, we must be held accountable, and we have to be real with God and with ourselves and just admit sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Some stuff the devil didn't make us do. Some, some stuff I did it all on my own. Some, some stuff I, I went out of my way to do. There's a difficulty with the crowd, a difficulty with his condition, and there's a difficulty with the critics. Now, now, now you don't have to be saved to know this, that, that you're going to have some critics in this life. You got critics in your ministry, at, at school, uh, on, on, your, on, your, on your sports team. You got critics on your job, in your community. And believe it or not, even in our own home, our own family, we're going to find some critics. That, that's why you can't tell everybody your dreams. That, that's why you can't tell everybody your heart's desires because everybody doesn't have your interests at heart. So, some people don't, don't, don't want you to see you advance. And just let me say, if you can't handle being criticized, then maybe a soldier in the army of God is not for you. If you can't handle being, be, being scoured upon, then just maybe you can't be an ambassador for Christ. If you don't like being talked about, then don't stand up for what's right. Here it is. Zacchaeus is trying to get his life right. He's trying to turn his life around, and people don't like it. <laughs> you had a lot of friends when you were out there in the world wilding out, doing your own thing, staying out till 3 o'clock in the morning, then have no problem with the people. But here it is. Just start trying to do the right thing. Just start trying to live for Jesus. That, that's when you will get your most resistance. Seems like people should get excited when you're trying to do something godly. Amen? Amen. People should celebrate when you're trying to elevate your, your, your education. They should congratulate you when you're trying to get another uh, uh, promotion on the job. But it's strange when people exhibit that crab and the bucket mentality. Always trying to pull somebody else back down. If I'm in it, you're in it too. Misery loves company. Folk don't want to see you prosper. Uh, they don't want to see you, you get elevated because they're not excited for you. Here it is, they're not excited for Zacchaeus because in verse 7 it says right here, they called him a sinner. Now tax collectors were, were, were despised and looked on as traitors. And people are so judgmental about Zacchaeus that he even spewed over into Jesus. Here it is, verse 7, he, he's going to be with the guest of a sinner. But I'm glad Jesus is not like man. Here it is, here it is that he will let what others say about him affect how he was going to bless Zacchaeus. I, I, I'm glad that uh, what they say about me, God, it doesn't affect how God blesses me. I, I'm glad that what they say about me, here it is, despite what others have said, is there anybody in the house today that can say I'm glad God still sees me? As dirty as I was, God still saw me. I, I'm glad, I'm glad God called me from the darkness into this marvelous light. Tore up from the floor, beat up, beat up from the knee up. I was messed up from the chest up, and God still saw me. He was able to reach way down and pick me up. Here, aren't you glad today that God looks beyond your faults and sees all your needs? Here it is. Zacchaeus in Hebrew means innocent, pure. Yes, yeah, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and who he was was not who God had called him to be. All praises be to God. Amen. And, and here, here it is. Here it is. Somebody needs to know if you're headed in the wrong direction, God allows a U-turn. Zacchaeus is known primarily for his faith and pursuit of Jesus. That he climbed up a sycamore tree. Like Zacchaeus in, in the tree, Jesus saw me. I'm glad when folks looked over me, Jesus still saw me. When friends walked away, Jesus still saw me. And not only do, do I see the difficulty in seeing Jesus, but point number two, we're going to get out your way, the dedication in seeing him. Zacchaeus has such a desire to see Jesus. He has such a made-up mind to see Jesus. He didn't let the size of the crowd nor the talk of the critics stop him in his pursuit of Jesus. Sometimes we're guilty of waiting for a crowd or a certain number of people to come into a building to get a service started. Y'all know what I'm saying? 
And if you're not careful, your critics will not only steal your joy, but they'll kill your vibe and smother your excitement. L -l Listen, don't let who you hung out with last night, don't let where you were last night, don't let what you did last night stop you from chasing after Jesus. Your mindset should always be, whoever I was with, wherever I was, whatever I did, God still deserves my praise. To be chasing after Jesus, even if I have to climb a sycamore tree. My thought process is, don't, don't let me be so blinded by them that I can't see him. Luke tells us, Luke tells us in verse 4, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree since Jesus was coming that way. Throughout the Bible, the sycamore fig tree uh, symbolizes life, prosperity, peace, and righteousness. Now, now, the very fact that Zacchaeus ran, the fact that he climbed the tree suggests to me that he put forth an honest effort to see Jesus. It suggests to me that he was determined to see Jesus. Some of us won't, won't walk up a flight of stairs, but Zac Zacchaeus climbed a tree just to see Jesus. And when you get serious about seeing Jesus, you're not going to just sit back and say, no, nah, don't take all that. No, 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 you're not going to do that. When you really want to see Jesus, you'll find yourself with your hands lifted high. You'll find yourself with a joyful, making a joyful noise. Hear me, somebody. You'll find yourself with tears running down your face. You'll find yourself putting forth an honest effort. Zacchaeus puts forth an honest effort. And listen, if you're just satisfied with seeing Jesus on Sunday morning, it won't take all that. But when you really want to see him, when you really want to feel yourself in the presence of the Lord, you'll give all the praise, all, you'll, you'll stand with your hands lifted high, you'll shout and make a joy for noise, you'll jump around, amen? You won't mind saying, thank you, Lord. All I'm saying is, when you're desperate to see Jesus, you'll put forth an honest effort. As a matter of fact, when you want something you never had before, you're going to do something you've never done before. Hear me, somebody. There's an honest effort, amen, by Zacchaeus, but there's also an escape by Zacchaeus. Verse 4 says, he ran ahead. Zacchaeus had to distance himself from the crowd. Now, now, please don't miss this. In order for you to see Jesus, it may require you to distance yourself from some people. Hear, hear me, graduates, when you're out there in the classroom and they're calling, hey, come on over, we got, got a party going on, we got that keg. Just know you're going to have to distance yourself from some people. Yeah, I know you laughing, joking, and y'all have a good time together. Yeah, she smells good. He smiles great. But you're going to have to distance yourself from some people. Yeah. Hear me. For those of you who don't know, you got five seasons. You got the winter, spring, summer. You got fall, and you've got your due season. Somebody here is in your due season today, and, and right now you, you, you need to make a decision. You've got to make a choice between friendship and relationship. The decision is, are you going to be in friendship with your so-called friends, or are you going to have a relationship with the Lord? And now, now, I can't tell you what to do because you're grown, but here it is. If you need some free advice, people can be fickle. They can be so two-faced. They, 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 they want to know what's in it for me. People will say things like, and they'll switch out on you in a heartbeat. So, so it just makes sense to stick with the one that's going to stick with you. Hear me, New Providence. Stick with Jesus because he will stick with you. How do I know he's going to stick with you? Because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Here it is. He, he was with you when you didn't have any money, and he's with you when you have money. He, he was with you when you were sick, and he's with you when, you, when you're feeling well. Amen. He was with you when you didn't have a job, and he was with you when you have a job. Amen? He's been with me. I don't mind telling somebody. He's been with me. He's been with me. Throughout the years, when I didn't even love myself, God was still with me. Amen? <laughs> Down through the years, he's been with me. Uh, th that's why I love him, because he's been with me. Can't make me doubt him. I, I know too much about him. He's been with me. I'm standing on the promises of God, because he he's been with me. Give me, give me four minutes, amen? I see the difficulty in seeing Jesus. I see the dedication in seeing him, and I'll take my seat when I tell you I see the delight in seeing Jesus, amen? It's a delight. Now, now I believe this thing was personal for Zacchaeus because verse 5 says right here, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. 
I must stay at your house today. To me, that's personal. And, and now out of all the people present, Jesus speaks directly to Zacchaeus. Somebody here knows that, that whenever God blesses you, he never gets your blessing mixed up with somebody else's blessing. Why? Because what God has for you, it is for you. God has a blessing with your name on it. God, God doesn't just, just throw out blessings and, and wherever they land, they land. You know how it is when they're at a parade and they come down the street and they're just throwing out the candy and throwing out the bees and wherever it falls, that's who gets it. No, no, no. God has a direct, amen, with your name on it. The real delight as I see it, here, here it is, was not in Zacchaeus seeing Jesus like when we see some celebrities, we're at the sports event or out there at the grocery store somewhere at the game or a concert. I, I think that the true delight was in Jesus seeing him. Jesus noticed him, somebody. Jesus, here it is, ex Zacchaeus is excited about the possibility of a newfound friend. He's excited about Jesus being in his home. He, he's excited about Jesus being a part of his life now. Has anybody in, in the house today ever invited Jesus into your home? Has anybody here ever invited Jesus into your life, into your relationship, on your job, as you're riding down the street? Amen? Are you happy about it today? Verse 6 says, so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. But even after being noticed, even after welcoming Jesus into his life, folks still talked about him, still called him names. Folks still hated on him. And sometimes it, it seems as if church folk can be so hurtful. Now notice I said church folk and not Christians. Church folk will tip God. But the Christians, they'll pay their tithes and their, their sacrificial offering. Hear me? Church folk will say they love you. Christians will show that they love you. Ch church folk will cause problems, but, but Christians will help solve those problems. Church folk will pray P-R-E-Y on you. Uh, uh, here it is. Christians will P-R-A-Y for you. Amen? Church folk will lay down their religion and get you told. Yeah, yeah, I know. I used to hear it all the time when I was a kid. Uh, don't make me lay down my religion now. <laughs> Amen? Z Zacchaeus says, here it is. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Verse 6 says, so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Here we are in verse 7 tells us all the people saw this. All the people saw this and began to mutter. Here it is. Church folk just got to be starting something. Zacchaeus is a mess. Yeah, well, the way I heard it was like this. He's a thief. He's a sinner. And he gets rich off of others. The thing is, they, they don't like tax collectors anyway, especially the rich ones. Uh, the, the, the muttering is everywhere. Jesus has gone to be the guest of a sinner. The message Bible reads it like this. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Wait a minute. Can't you hear them talking about this thing? Jesus, don't you know his past? Don't you know what Zach is, is about? Don't you know all the stuff he's done? Don't you know all the people he's hurt and cheated out of their money? Listen, whenever you're happy, whenever you're excited about what God is doing in your life, don't make the mistake and think others are going to be happy for you. Everybody's not going to uh, be happy when God is moving on your behalf. They're not happy when God is in your life. They're not happy when, when God is in your home. But, but since he's there, since he's there, since God is blessing you and your household, go ahead, somebody, and rejoice. Rejoice that Jesus saw you and he called you by your name. Shout a, a joy for praise. You're not perfect by no means, but Jesus saw you and he called you by your name. I was a wretch undone on my way to hell and I was enjoying the trip, but Jesus saw me and he called me by my name. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. My heart, my soul cries out, thank you, Lord, for blessing me. When I look back over, here it is, I see hills and hills and more hills and more hills and more hills. But I was sinking, I was sinking, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. 
very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me. From a life of sin, he lifted me. From a world of marijuana, he lifted me. From sexual immorality, he lifted me. Now say, now say, now faith am I. I don't mind telling somebody when nothing else would do. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Jesus saw me and he called me by my name. And just like a good parent whose child has fallen in the dirt, Jesus will pick you up, brush you off, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground, tell you now run on and see what the end is going to be. I'm happy he picked me up today. He brushed me off. I'm glad that he sent me on my way. But I don't have to worry because goodness and gracious and mercy is always there. They follow me everywhere I go. Woke me up this morning in my right mind. Hallelujah. Had some food on the table, a roof over my head. The Lord is good and the Lord is blessing. He's blessing and more blessings and more blessings. I'm glad Jesus saw me and he called me by my name. Amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Amen. Jesus saw me and he called me by my name. There's a, there's a phrase we use in Chosen Generation. Uh, we say, stay on, stay on the wall. And, and I'm sure these two know what I'm saying. When, stay on the wall. Don't, don't, don't come down for nothing that's not godly. Stay in the books. I, I know we, we didn't mention Darian this morning, Darian Kemp, but um, I know he's got his head in that computer thing. He's going to be game, ma making those video games and everything. Don't forget the rev when I call you for that loan. Amen? Takara, I hear you. I know you already got it written out for me. You're just waiting for me to call and ask for it. Amen. Amen. Uh, um, right about now, uh, we have something from Chosen Generation to Takara and for Darian, and we have a little something here from Sister Faison and I for, for would you come on up here? Um, to Katara, uh, Darian, those are for you, and this is for Katara. Uh, turn around real fast, come on. Let's give them a hand, our, our graduates from Chosen Generation this morning, amen? Amen. Go ahead and have a seat there. The, the doors of the church is now open, amen? Maybe I should have done it the other way, but here it is where we are in this moment in time. The doors are now open. If there's someone here happy about Jesus seeing you, you, you may not be a member of a church. You may not understand that God really loves you like that, that he would give his only begotten son. Amen? The word tells us very rarely would a, would a, would a, would a person die for a good man. Amen? But Jesus gave his life. Would there be one here today who want to give their life to Christ? Would there be one here that would want to change their church home? Maybe out there in the Zoom land, in the Roku land. Amen? On Facebook. Would there be one today? Just one. Amen. 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 But we, we've come to do what God has a, our assignment, what we've been appointed to do today. We, we pray a covering over our pastor, wherever he may be. I just want to acknowledge my, my wife, Sister Laura. She's, she's, that, she's my favorite time of the year, y'all. My favorite time of the year. Most gracious and everlasting God. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for loving on us when we couldn't love ourselves. Father, we thank you for your word that you've given us to live by. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you not only saw us and you called us out of the tree, you called us from the darkness until there's a marvelous light. But we thank you, Lord God, that you gave us enough love in us that we would invite you into our lives, invite you into our home, invite you into our every being, Lord God. 
ask that you would continue to cover us, Lord God. Be our uh, COVID vaccination, Lord God. Strengthen us, Lord God. Those are uh, the bereaved families around the world, the, the senseless killings, Father. We don't understand why, but we know that you don't make mistakes. You're the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord God. You're the giver of good and perfect gifts. So we thank you. We say it is well with our souls. Ask you to be with us now as we go our separate ways, but never from your presence. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forever, and those who love the Lord, amen, amen, amen. I see some young chosen generations out there. We're going to have to recruit them, amen. God be with you.